Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ronke Darani Jo of Aroni Clothier and today we'll be learning how to make this beautiful bustier mermaid gown with exaggerated sleeve. If this is what you would like to learn, kindly stay tuned. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and please give this video a thumbs up. Also feel free to share, like and comment. So without further ado, let's get right into the cutting process. So yeah i'll be drafting out my skirt pattern for the lower part so i've gone ahead to divide our head by two and i have 20.5 so i'll be using 20.5 to create my skirt block as you can see i'm marking out my 20.5 just like that to the skirt length so the next thing i want to do is to divide the 20.5 by another two that's to create um a block for the front and the back so i'm gonna have to mark out that line and as you can see so i can indicate my front and back so the next now indicate my gown as you can see i'm gonna have to place for my half length which is 18 inches to get my actual gown length and i've done that i've gotten the gown length so the next now i'm doing is to measure my waist to hip um measurement my waist to above knee line and as you can see i'm gonna have to mark all those lines and i've drawn them out so the next thing i want to do is to take my nipple to nipple measurement which is um 3.5 so as you can see i'm gonna have to mark a um, nipple to nipple measurement and on that nipple to nipple line i um took 0.75 to the right and to the left and i came up by one inches from the waist to hip line and i connected it so for the back i'm also taking a tightening of 0.75 at that back as you can see center back so after the center back i'll go ahead to take my nipple to nipple divided by two measurements to create my dad's line so i'll be taking 0.75 to the right and 0.75 to the left and i'll come up by one inches at the waist to hip line and connect to the 0.75 on the waistline just like that so the next thing i'm doing is to um divide my waist circumference by four and then connect it to my hip measurement just like that and then on the above knee line as you can see because i'm making a mermaid gown i'll be going in by two inches from my original line that center line i'll be going in by two inches and then i'll connect it to the hip line just like that so once i'm done doing that the next thing i want to do because i'm making a mermaid gown i will connect it back to that center line that i have i'll connect it back to that center line if you're making a straight gown, you can just take the two inches down. But because I'm making a mermaid gown, I just took it down um, to the middle line, just like that. So the next thing I want to do is to come down by 1.25 inches on my center front line and then connect it to my waistline. That way to eliminate any bulge that might want to arise at the um, center line, just like that, where the joining will be taking place. So I'll go ahead to cut out the front and I'll show you what it looks like. So please take note while I'm cutting. So when I get to that waist area, as you can see, when I get to that waist area, I will show you how you cut it. So when I get to that waist area, I need to close up my dart so that I don't have shortage while cutting because of the 1.25 inches I came down by so i'll cut like so so that i can have a perfect front pattern so i'll go ahead to take that line that my nipple to nipple line that i've closed up i'll go ahead to mark it down because it's on that line i'll be slashing and spreading so the next thing i want to do is to work on my back pattern as you can see i have shortage around the waist area of my back pattern so i'm trying to fill it up with an extra paper around that waist area just like that so that I can um, take out my waist circumference. So don't forget to add back your um, dart intake once you are dividing your waist circumference. Don't forget to add back your dart intake. So I've connected it to my hip line just like that. And then at the waist to the uh, above knee line, as you can see for the front, I went in by two inches, but for the back, I'll be sharing that two inches on both sides. That's one inches to the center back and one inches to the side back. And I'm co I've connected it to um, the hip line just like that. So I'm, I'm going to be taking that one inches down to the extreme. If you're making a straight skirt, you take it down like this, straight down like this. But in a case where you're making a mermaid, you see where I altered it. I took it back to the end of the paper just like that. 
Just like that. I'm going to have to take it just like that. So I'll be cutting on for you to see. So I'm cutting on the second line, not the first line that I drew. So I'm cutting just like that. So as you can see around that waist area, so the same thing I did for the front, I came down by 1.25 for the back, so I'll be coming down by 1.25 or you can do 1 inches at the center back and I'll connect it back to the waistline just like that, just for extra fitting and to avoid excesses around that part. So I'm closing up my dart also to cut so that I don't have shortage because the moment you close up your dart, there will be a little shift, so that's why you need to close your dart up before you cut that part out so I'm done doing that I'll go ahead to draw that line that's my nipple to nipple line I'll go ahead to draw it down because it is on that line I'll be slashing and spreading so this is my pattern for the front and for the back so the next thing I want to do is to cut through that line so that I can spread and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done So as you can see, that's the way I'm going to spread for the front. So I'll be cutting on my door face lining because lace can be so unstable. So I would advise you cut on your door face lining. So, so I'm going to have to cut. So the down is straight because the surface will be coming in around there. If you don't want it, you can go ahead and curve it just the way you see the second chalk. So at the side, I added... 2 inches at the waist area and at the hip area I added 2 inches but on the above knee I reduced it by 1 inches or you can reduce it by half an inch so if you are using 2 inches at the waist area when you get to your above knee you reduce it so that you don't have too much at that part so I'm gonna have to cut the same thing on my lace fabric and I'm pinning together so that I can join the side so this is the back. I don't know how I omitted while I was cutting on the um on the lining part. So I'm gonna have to cut the back too. And I've cut out the lace. So the next thing I want to do is to go ahead and sew up my dart at the back and then I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm gonna have to sew the dart on my lace fabric and on the lining. This way I'm trying to work with our budget so I've secured the dart, so the next thing I want to do is to just secure the side, the both sides, the center back and the side. So here yeah, I have my basic bodies. I have a full video on how to draft the basic bodies. You can check it out. I'll drop the link in the description box. So the next thing I did was to mark out my shoulder to under bust on my basic bodies because I need that part to tighten the under bust. So there are two ways to tighten your under. You can make use of your dart intake or you go ahead and measure your underbust circumference and you make use of what you have left to tighten. So you are making use of my underbust circumference. So watch what I'll be doing. So I'm going ahead to divide my underbust circumference by four. And as you can see, I've placed the measurement and what I have left, I measured. So that is what I'll be sharing on on both sides use it on both sides so you, you you the maximum you can place to your um center front area is half an inch and then you place the rest to the right hand area just like that and then you connect it back to your that leg so that is what i've done i've gone ahead to um, mark out that line and then i connected it back to my nipple to nipple line so or you can make use of your, like I said, you can make use of your dart intake and you share the figure on both sides the way you like. So the next thing I want to do is to determine my new um, neck level. So here I've gone ahead to mark 7 inches because she doesn't want it revealing. So I've gone ahead to mark 7 inches for the new neck level. And then I'll be um, shaping the neck area by three and a half inches wide and three and a half inches deep because she doesn't want the yoke part of the net to be too choky. 
So after doing that, the next thing I want to do is to measure what I have left on my shoulder area. And once I'm done measuring that, I'll look for the midpoint and I'll connect the midpoint to my nipple point. Just like that. So once I'm done doing that, the next thing I want to do on that new neck um, level I have, I'll go in by one inches to the right and to the left, just like that. And then I'll use my cuff to connect it back to the nipple point. So uh, uh, that part will enable the overbust to be firm. So the next thing I want to do is to determine um, the cleavage level, how, um, how I want the sweetheart's neck, the new um, neck depth to be shaped. So as you can see, I went down by one and a half inches and I've connected it to the first that leg on the overbust area. So the next thing I'm doing here is just to measure a strap to strap so that I don't have shortage or I don't have excess. I just want that overbust area to be firm. So I'm using a strap to strap as a guide to measure the width so that I can have a perfect fit around the overbust area. So all I did was to divide a strap to strap, which is which is 11. 11 divided by 2, I have 5 and a half. So I went ahead to mark 5 and a half and then I added half an inch extra so that I can have um, that arm or part well covered such that the bust is not revealing. So I'm done with the front pattern. So the next thing I want to do is to go to the back pattern. But before then, you can see that difference in between the back and the front length. I'll transfer it to my um, front pattern as a bust that. So on the um, shoulder to nipple area, I just went down by the difference I have and then I connected it to the nipple point. Just like that. So the next thing I want to do for the back, the same neck line I um I use for the front is what I've come to use for the back in terms of wideness. Then my depth is different because I don't want the back neck depth to be too deep. So yeah, I'll be maintaining the chest line to be my back and uh, my new back level. My new back level. So I'll be connecting from that point to the chest line just like that to style my back yoke so as you can see this is what i have so the next thing i want to do is to go ahead and cut out that part just like that that's the upper part to be my um, net yoke and then for the down i have this So for the net yoke for the front, I'm going ahead to tighten it by 0.25 inches so that I don't have an excess around that net area just like that. So I'm cutting my arm O and then I cut out the new neckline I had and the shoulder slope just like that. So just watch carefully the areas I'm cutting. And I'll cut out the arm o part. So for the boss part, because at the moment I close up my boss, that there will definitely be a shortage. So I'll go ahead and fill up that part with paper so I don't have a shortage around that part. And I'll close up the boss that also. So after closing up the boss that, the curvy part is looking kind of pointed. So I'll go ahead and blend with my curve so I, I can have a round shape. So my pattern is ready. So you, you can see for the um, yoke area, I'll go ahead and close up that part so that I can align it with the down part. As you can see, it's perf it fits perfectly with the down part. So in that case, you don't have an excess towards the arm area. So always tighten your net yoke.
0 0.25 we do on both sides so i'm gonna have to cut on my lining part and i'll cut i'll do the same thing on my lace as you can see i've done the same thing i've cut out the lace part also so this is for the back and i'm gonna have to notch my dart so that i can and uh, identify where i want to sew my dart so this is for the front i'm gonna have to cut um the front lining and the front main fabric So this is the yoke. I'll be making use of the skin net. So for the skin net, you need to check out that part that stretches very, very well. So you want your net to stretch to the body and not to the length. Your width that will fall to the horizontal part while, while you are placing your paper. So um, as you can see, I'm going to have to fold my net and then I'll be cutting out my pattern. So I'll, I'll be adding half an inch to the upper part, to the neck area, and to the shoulder part, and the arm or part. So once I'm done, I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm done, as you can see. This is what my net looks like. I, I cut four pieces for the front. Um, four piece for the back sorry because that is what i'll be using to turn also so and two piece for the front so i'll go ahead to um secure my lining to my lace fabric just as a support because the lace is transparent and i'll cut out every excesses i have so when i'm done i'll show you what it looks like so for the back So for the back, because I want my back to have modesty panel and I want it to be laced. So I'm reducing my center back by the figure I want. So as you can see, I'm going to have to reduce my center back by the figure I want to be open. And then I added half an inch allowance for turning. So don't forget to notch unnecessary areas. So I'll be doing the same thing for the other part of the back also. So I'm done doing that. So this is the sleeve. Because the sleeve also will be having the net part. So for this um front for the skin net, I'll be sewing using my invisible thread as you can see. So I've when I to use my invisible thread to sew up the neck the lining and the main one because i like i said i cut two pieces um of net for the front so i'm gonna have to secure with my visible thread and then i'll trim all the uh, excesses i have around the neck area and then i'll give it a good press and i've done the same thing for the back while you are sewing please don't forget to stretch your net stretch it because it's a stretchy fabric so why are so in stretch please do not forget to hit the subscribe button below so i'm gonna have to interface my front and add wording to to it see the next video for the concluding parts